Maya has a fantastic tool set for visual effects. In this exercise, we'll look at two of them, particles and fluids. This is an intermediate level tutorial, assuming that you have some experience with Maya Dynamics. If you haven't already done our tutorial on particles, the magic wand, I would suggest that you do that tutorial first. We'll start, as always, by creating a project in Maya. File, Project, New. And in this case, I'll just create it in the default location in my current user's documents folder. And I'll call it Fluid Rocket Project. I'll click Use Defaults, click Accept. And I've already got a window open to show you that right next to the default project in my current user's documents folder. Now I've got Fluid Rocket Project. At this point, you should have also downloaded the zip file from the Digital Arts Guild website. And I've got that here in another window, too. So in my downloads, I've got fluids rocket start .zip. Well, in fact, I can just open that up directly in Windows and get at the Maya ASCII file inside. And I want to place it in the Scenes folder of my new project. So here's my new project, Scenes. And I'll just drag and drop that ASCII file into my current Fluid Rocket Project Scenes folder. Back in Maya, File Open Scene. Fluid's Rocket Start, Open. And what we have in this scene are a few display layers. Let me tap the space bar and go out to the four viewport layout. Let me just back out in the top view to show you the scene layout. All we've got is a simple rocket rig and a camera and also a directional light here which is producing sunlight. If we click in the camera view and do a rendering, you'll see that the lighting and textures for this model have already been done. Cool. Eventually we'll get to animating this rocket and the way that's done is by selecting this NURB circle at the top. It's called rocket launch control. And if I move that in any direction. That's how we can animate the rocket later. So I'll hit Z to undo that. And finally, let me open the outliner, window outliner, to show you the hierarchy in the scene. So there's the camera, there's the light, and then rocket launch control is the NURB circle. And inside that, we've got a light because eventually we're going to have light coming out from here in addition to our fluid. So I've already provided a point light there. And then finally, there's a group which includes four pieces of geometry and their NURB surfaces. So that's our scene layout. And now we're going to add a background. The rocket's flying through empty space. So all we really need are a set of points in the background randomly placed. So particles are a perfect candidate for something like that. Up in my menu sets, I'll choose the dynamics menu set. Particles, Create Emitter. Let's go to the Options. And inside here, we just want to make sure that we have the emitter type is Omni. It's going to send particles out from a central location, which we'll just leave at the origin. Let me open this up a little bit so we can see more of it. The distance and direction attributes. If we want our particles to be born a distance away from the origin, then we can put some values in here. For a star field in the background, we should probably have a min and max distance on the order of at least 100 units. So I'll set a value of 100 for the max distance and 100 for the minimum distance. So this will create a shell of particles 100 units away from the origin. The speed I'll set to zero because I don't want my stars to drift around. Scrolling down, and there are no other attributes that apply in this situation. So I'll click Create. The emitter is created at the origin. I'm going to put it on a display layer so that I don't get it confused with any of my other geometry. It's already selected, so I'll just click in my display layers to create a new layer and assign selected objects. Double click on that name and I'll call that Stars layer. And click Save. 
I'll just go ahead and reference the rocket layer 2 while I'm working so I don't accidentally move it. And let me back out a little bit in my orthographic views. I've got the side view. And rewind and play back. And I do start to see particles appearing in my viewports. Select the particles. Hit the 4 key so we can see wireframe. We can start to see them appearing. So a couple things are going on here. We have the typical behavior of Maya, which is it's trying to play back as fast as it can in the timeline. We want to constrain that to 24 frames a second, or whatever our current time base is. Remember, you can always display the current frame rate by going to Display Heads Up Display Frame Rate. And when I rewind, maximize the view to be sure with the space bar, playback, and I'm getting 600 frames a second. Stop, and I'll right-click on the timeline and choose Playback Speed, Play Every Frame, Max Real Time. Now we can see the stars sort of pop on one by one. We're playing at 24 frames a second. I'm going to immediately go to the Attribute Editor for the Particle System, Control-A, and select the Particle Shape node or the emitter node to control its attributes. So if I want those particles to come out faster, I would go to the emitter node and set a higher rate. Let's say 1000. Press enter. Now they're popping on faster. What I would like to happen here is that all the particles appear on the first frame of the animation. And I can accomplish that by setting a very high particle rate but then limiting the number of total particles. So I've got a rate of 1,000, which is somewhat moderate right now, and it is playing back sort of OK. I just want to have them all pop on on frame 1. So I'll go back to the Shape node, and you will see that there is a max count attribute here in the Emission attributes. So this is setting a cap on the total number of particles allowed. So I'll set that to, let's say, 10,000. Press Enter. Go back to the emitter node and then increase the rate to something very high, like a million. And press Enter. Rewind and play back, and the particles all appear on one frame. If you rewind and play back, you'll notice that you do get the same constellations each time. And the pattern of random distribution of particles is controlled in the particles shape node. If you want to get a different pattern, you can go down into, here it is, emission random stream seeds and set this to some other value and rewind, and you will get a different pattern each time if you put a different seed value. In order to clearly see the difference, of changing the emitter 1 value. I'll do a before and after rendering. I've opened up the render view by clicking the render view button on the status line. And I've chosen Maya hardware as my renderer. And I'll click the render button. Now we have some hardware rendered point particles. I'll store that in memory by clicking the keep image button. And then change the emitter seed value. Rewind and play back to get a different pattern, and then click the Render button again. And as I scrub through the two renderings, you will see that indeed we have two different random patterns of stars. Excellent, so that's a good point for us to save. File Save Scene As, and I'll call it Fluids Rocket 01.ma.